The moon is the closest celestial body to Earth, making it feel both familiar and mysterious to us. It's familiar because we only need to look up to see its bright glow, yet it remains distant since most of us will never have a chance to visit it in our lifetimes. But thanks to advances in science and technology, scientists have uncovered many of the moon's secrets for us. Today, let's explore some fascinating facts about the moon and see how much you really know. For starters, everyone knows that the temperature difference between day and night on the moon is huge, right? Because there's no atmosphere, temperatures in sunlit areas can soar above 100 degrees Celsius, hot enough to boil water. Of course, that's under standard atmospheric pressure. In reality though, you wouldn't have a chance to boil water there. That's because at lower air pressures, the boiling point of liquids drops dramatically. The lower the pressure, the lower the boiling point. Since the moon's surface is almost a perfect vacuum, any liquid water would instantly evaporate. And while it's scorching during the day, at night, without an atmosphere to retain heat, temperatures plummet to below minus 100 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, even the carbon dioxide you exhale would instantly freeze into dry ice. Again, that's under standard atmospheric pressure. But in reality, any gas would instantly expand and vanish into space. The so-called seas on the moon aren't seas at all. There's not a drop of water in them. They're actually planes on the moon. Long ago, asteroid impacts blasted huge craters into the moon, which were later filled by lava from beneath the surface. As the lava cooled, it gradually formed flat plains. These basalt plains look dark from Earth, almost like deep oceans. That's why we call them lunar seas. Today, we know these lunar seas are the flattest regions on the moon. For example, the first Apollo landing site was the Sea of Tranquility, one of these plains. It was this very plane that witnessed humanity's first step beyond our planet, with our brave footprints forever etched here. Most Earth Moon models show the Moon very close to Earth, making it look like reaching the Moon isn't a big deal. But in reality, the Moon is about 384,000 kilometers away from Earth. That number might be hard to picture, but imagine lining up all seven of the other major planets in our solar system side by side between Earth and the Moon, with room to spare for some asteroids. That's why most solar system images are just diagrams. The real scale is too vast to show. Space is far emptier than you think. And as far as the Moon is, it's actually getting farther away. Right now, the moon drifts away from Earth at about 3.8 centimeters a year. It may not seem like much, just 3.8 centimeters a year, but if you look back 4.6 billion years to when the moon first formed, it was likely only 20,000 to 30,000 kilometers from Earth, practically right next door. This is because Earth rotates faster than the moon orbits, so Earth's tides pull the moon forward. As the moon is pulled forward, it moves faster and its orbit gets bigger, so it drifts farther away. This isn't just theory, it's been confirmed both by ancient solar eclipse records and by laser reflectors left on the moon by the Apollo missions. Have you ever noticed that the patterns on the moon always look the same every time you see it? You might even wonder if it ever rotates at all. Maybe it's just a flat image stuck in the sky. But the fact that we always see just one side is actually proof that the moon is spinning. If the moon didn't rotate on its own, you would definitely see both its front and back sides alternately. We only see the front because as the moon orbits Earth, it also rotates once on its own axis. Its rotation and orbit are perfectly synchronized, both take exactly 27.32 days. The reason for this unique phenomenon is something called tidal locking. Because the moon is so close to Earth, tidal forces have been tugging on it for eons. Over time, these forces slowed and synchronized the moon's spin to match its orbit. Because the moon has no atmosphere, there's no wind or rain, no weather at all. On top of that, the moon's core has mostly cooled, so there's hardly any geological activity. So the marks on the moon's surface, like craters, can remain for millions or even billions of years, unless a new meteor hits and alters them. That includes Neil Armstrong's footprints. They're still there, and they'll remain for the foreseeable future. Earth isn't the only place with quakes. The moon has them too, called moonquakes. There are several kinds, like deep moon quakes caused by stresses from the moon cooling and shrinking inside. Some of these quakes originate hundreds of kilometers below the surface. In addition, some asteroid impacts can also trigger brief tremors, known as meteorite impact quakes. Another type is caused by the extreme temperature differences between day and night. 
Rocks on the surface can crack from expanding and contracting, sometimes triggering tiny tremors. These are called thermal quakes. No matter the type, compared to earthquakes on Earth, moonquakes are much milder. The strongest ones only reach about magnitude 4. People once believed the moon was a completely cold, lifeless body. In fact, even in the last century, some thought it might be hollow, a theory that some people still find fascinating today. But modern research has shown for some time that the moon not only has a core, but that core is still warm. By studying seismometer data left by the Apollo missions and measurements of the moon's gravitational field, scientists have discovered that the moon has a solid inner core made of iron-nickel alloy. This core is surrounded by a layer of molten iron. This structure is very similar to Earth's core, except the moon's core is much cooler, just over 1000 degrees Celsius. Although this heat isn't enough to fuel strong geological activity, it means the moon isn't entirely dead. This also gives us important clues for understanding how the moon formed and evolved. I often hear people say they can't understand my usual content. Today's topic should be simple and easy to follow, right? If you learned something new today about the moon, congratulations. And if you already knew all of this, don't worry. Next time, we'll talk about some lesser known cool facts about the moon.